Since I love to do live streams, which aren't as successful as my normal videos, but there are still people who watch them, and since live streams are becoming more of a thing in this day and age, especially with the release of games that are perfect for live streaming, and also clickbaits, I would love to share you guys what I know in how to live stream video games or live stream normally, also known as how to publicly embarrass myself in front of so many people. I got this. <laughs> Good move. Beat you this time. What? You're still here? You still want to live stream? Alright then, before we get to that, huge thanks to our wonderful new patrons, Don, Redux, and Talik. You guys are fantastic. Now I will give the tutorial for both the PC and the console at the same time. The setup is a bit different from each, but the one tool that is crucial for the streaming magic to happen is this thing called a capture card. So what this capture card does is it basically captures the audio and the video output of your favorite gaming consoles into your PC. If you're streaming on PC, you can also use this capture card to connect it to another PC that is, if I have another PC to demonstrate it to you. Why do you have to do that? Well, streaming on a PC actually eats up a lot of your CPU. Not only that the latest video games will be using the CPU, but the encoding process, which is basically the video making process for your stream, will also eat up a lot of CPU. So if you have a gaming PC with a CPU that is relatively good for gaming, but not good enough for streaming, you can get yourself a capture card and connect your gaming PC into your dedicated streaming PC. PC, which can be your old laptops or your old computers, etc. You can also connect them both using an Ethernet cable without the needs of any sorts of capture cards, but unfortunately the process is a little bit more complicating and I won't really get into that. There's a good video link down below that you can watch if you want to go more in depth with the whole two PC gaming streams with the Ethernet cable thing. So that's pretty much the basics of it. Connect your console or your PC into the capture card and connect the capture card into the PC or another dedicated streaming PC. Now every capture card should have two HDMI slots. The first one is the input, which is where the HDMI from your console should go. And then finally the output where that will go into the TV. Do we really have to plug it into the TV? Why can't we just play the game directly on the PC? Well, unfortunately some capture cards have a severe delay, which means that you can't exactly have a smooth experience if you just connect the game on the PC and play it through there. Thankfully, capture cards like the Razer Ripsaw right here have a very neat feature of near to zero latency, which means that you don't have to plug the HDMI output into your TV. You can just simply play the latest PS4 or Switch or Xbox One games on the PC and confuse the living hell out of everybody. There is a bit of a delay, very little, but it's not to the point where your experience would be hampered. I have been the entire God of War reboot without connecting the PS4 into the TV at all. Now how does this capture card achieve this? Simple, it uses USB 3.0, which offers a significantly faster data rate compared to USB 2.0 to around 10 times faster. Of course, your PC would absolutely require a USB 3.0 input in order for this to work, but most laptops and PCs these days should be equipped with at least one. If your laptop or PC don't have USB 3.0, but they have USB-C or Thunderbolt, there are dongles that let you have USB 3.0 ports as well. Alternatively, you can also get one of those capture cards that directly connect into the PC through PCI Express, although this one is obviously desktop only. So now that we got the game capture out of the way, what about the camera? Well, you need to equip yourself with a good webcam. Logitech has always offered great webcams, and this one over here, the C922, offers capturing images at 1080p 30fps and 720p 60fps at around 90 bucks to 100 bucks. Anyway, here's the preview of the C922 webcam, and I did run it through some brightness and gamma filters in OBS because the light is pretty low, and this webcam is not that great with dealing with low lights. It's still great for general use and streaming purposes, and I still recommend this over your laptop webcam for certain. You also need the best microphone for the job. You can't exactly do streams with a audio quality like this. So what you're gonna need is to get yourself a cheap USB microphone 
like this one. My microphone is a cheap USB microphone, Samsung Q2U, which is around 50 bucks, and I highly recommend this one if you're just going to start streaming. This microphone has served me for quite some time. I use this microphone for this video, and I use this microphone for my streams as well. The quality is pretty good for a $50 microphone. You can also go for XLR microphones, but while the quality is exceptional and there are so many advanced tweaks that you can do, setting them up is complicating and they can be very expensive. Another good thing to invest in is a boom arm. This boom arm is very cheap. I got it for 20 bucks or actually it's 10 bucks. It's a lot cheaper than that basically. And they usually come in with a shock mount perfect for dynamic microphones like the Q2U. So now that you have the microphone, the webcam and the game capture ready, let's plug them all in. Now the question is, how are we going to compile all of them into one convenient streaming package? Well, we're going to need a software called OBS Studio. OBS Studio is one of the best streaming and screen recording software in the market. You can grab this software for free, the download links are in the description. So once you installed OBS Studio, just fire up OBS. So where do we begin? Well first, OBS will provide you with a default scene. A scene is basically your stage. This is going to be the screen that you will show to the audiences. You can also have multiple scenes, which I will explain later. So I will name this scene main. And once you do that, you can add many elements on your scene in the next page, like videos, webcams, and everything. Now, before we get into tampering with OBS, if you're a console gamer and you want to stream your games in your gaming consoles, there should be an option in which you can set up the resolution of the video output. This is incredibly important so that the capture card can pick up the signal appropriately. So you need to go to the settings for your consoles and set up the display resolution. I myself display games at 720p resolution in both the Switch and the PS4. Remember the resolution that you pick so that whatever the capture card picks up can be displayed properly on your PC. Now we're going to add capture devices in OBS. After you plugged everything in and turn on your consoles in OBS, right click, add video capture device, give it a name, and finally select your capture card. In my case, it's the Razer Ripsaw. Once you connected it, it says that the signal is out of range. Go to resolution slash FPS type, set it to custom, and set the resolution to whatever resolution that you just set up last time in your consoles. In my case, it's 720p, so I set it to 1280 by 720. Now, if you connected the capture card into the PC, but you didn't connect it into the TV, the first problem that you will encounter is you can't exactly hear the audio coming from the game. The solution for this is pretty simple. In your capture card properties, scroll down the setting here and output audio should be set to wave out. In that way, you can listen to the audio coming from the console as much as you like from your own PC. But the audio is a little messed up or there's still no audio. Well, in your capture card setting, which you can access through here, choose HDMI plus auxiliary. In that way, your capture card is set and you are good to go. Now in the OBS settings, make sure that your default speaker and default microphone are set up. Just go to settings, audio, and just set all of the things from there, like your microphones, desktop audio, etc. If you want to add webcam, simple. Just do the same process that we did to add your capture card, but instead of adding your capture card, select your webcam. From there, you can set up and resize your webcam in any manner that you want, or even resize the game itself. What about the PC gamers who don't have a capture card and want to stream games using their PC as well? We simply need to add display. Any full screen application in your monitor will display the games that you want. But if you want to use your gaming PC as your streaming PC as well, you will need a really good CPU. At minimum, it should have been a 4 core egg fresh CPU like the Core i7 series or AMD Ryzen 5 or better in order for you to stream the latest AAA games without any sort of interference or lag. At this moment, you should be able to stream your games normally with just your voice and the camera. This is the most basic OBS streaming setup that you can find. Another good addition for the mix, even though it isn't too necessary, it's absolutely great if you have a second monitor so that you can monitor the stream recording and also read the chat as you stream along. The great thing about OBS is that the features are not limited to just those. Through OBS, you can also add many things like pictures, videos, GIFs, etc. Pictures, for example, can be used to make some sort of overlays for your stream. So you can make your own overlays like in Coral Draw, Photoshop, or in my case, PowerPoint, and you can add them in your stream so that it looks a lot cooler and more organized. 
you can also add more scenes. And this is where OBS absolutely excels. If, for example, in the middle of the stream, you wanna take a break and you wanna not show the games or the webcam, you can add another scene that simply says break. And this scene can contain anything you want. It can contain videos or just a simple solid picture that says break, whatever you please. You just need to add them in the source panel. Now, how can we transition between one scene after another? Well, OBS also got you covered with the hotkeys. So if I wanna take a break, for example, I can press my desired hotkey, which in this case, control numpad five, and then just take a quick break before going back into the gaming stream, which I set to control numpad three. There are so many customization options in OBS that I won't bring up here for the sake of time. So the question right now is how to connect this OBS setup into the actual YouTube or Twitch servers. Well, the process in both are basically the same. You're going to need a stream key, which will basically connect your OBS software into the servers of whatever streams that you will have. So here I am at the YouTube live stream page. You can choose stream now, which will immediately stream whatever content you want into the page. In order for you to get the key, go to stream options and there you go, there's the stream key. Do not share the stream key to anyone unless you want people to hack into your streams. So once you got the stream key, go to OBS settings menu, click the stream page, select it to YouTube, and then just paste the stream key right there. From that point on, you can just click the start streaming button and stream your games as you please. But don't start the stream yet because we still have more things to set up. On YouTube, you can also plan your streams prior. The process is almost the same. In the live streaming page, go to events, schedule a new event, configure the events as you see fit, and you can also select between the latencies here. So an ultra low latency stream is where you can interact with the chat almost immediately, while the other options will introduce a bit of a delay, but have higher quality videos. So where's the stream key you might ask? Well, once you configured all of the options and confirm the information, it's Right there, you can select a single-use stream key or a reusable stream key. Once you pick the one you want, just do the same thing as last time. Copy the stream key, paste it, and you can start streaming. On Twitch, well, I'm not too experienced when streaming on Twitch, but the process is almost the same, if not a bit easier. You need to get the stream key, which you can get on your Twitch account, go to Dashboard, settings and there should be an option to get your stream key once you get your stream key copy and paste it to obs when you press that start stream button you should be good to go so after you got the games the microphone the obs setup and the obs connections to the stream there's one more option that you need to check on which is the quality of your stream now this is very important because your stream can either be smooth or lagging depending on the bit rate of your video so how do we configure this properly well first off you're gonna need to do a speed test of your internet connection just do a speed test on your internet connection and yeah, it's not exactly a great internet connection, let's just say. So what do we use with this information? How do we configure all of this? Well, in OBS, go to the settings tab once again, click on output, and make sure you set it to advanced so we can have tons of options to tweak. I am streaming at 360p because my internet sucks, so I rescaled the resolution to 640 by 360. If you want to stream in a higher resolution, you need to have a really damn good internet connection. If you have those, just rescale the output to whatever resolution you prefer. And don't forget to increase the bitrate, which is basically the rate of the video's file size that you will send per second into the stream. So if I type in 500, for example, then my video would have a bitrate of 500 kilobytes per second. Now the question is, what is the recommended bitrate for each resolution? Well, don't worry. YouTube and Twitch have their own recommended settings for each resolution. You can consider Solve all of them with the links in the description. You don't want to get too high or too low than the recommended settings. The gist of it is this, the higher the bitrate, the better the quality, but the internet connection speed and stability would suffer. The lower the bitrate, the faster and more stable your internet speed is, but the quality of the video would suffer. So again, try to find that perfect balance. Also, don't make the same mistake like I did and stream video games at 720p with the bitrate below the minimum requirements. If you do that, then the game would look like a pixelated mess. A 360p stream at 500 kilobytes per second is much better than a 720p stream at 500 kilobytes per second. It's mainly because there are fewer pixels to process. And that's really all there is to it. If you have any questions, please let me know down below in the comments or just contact me on Twitter at Appaben because I am more active in there. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will return into our regularly scheduled program next time. And by regularly scheduled program, I mean more discussions about hentais.
Oh, 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 oh,